Hello. I'm very happy to be able to participate in Griot Vision's website with this offering of some information about my role with Emancipation Day. As you know, August 1st, 1834, was the date when the Slavery Abolition Act or the British Imperial Act went into effect on these lands that we now call Canada. It was passed in 1833, but it took a year for Britain to get around to all of their colonies. And we all, all of the colonies, Canada was one of them, effective August 1st, 1834 in Canada, some places it was protracted, uh, abolished slavery. So my uh, position has been one of helping to support and enact a commemoration of many things historical related to African Canadians and the African diaspora. And let me just tell you a little bit about Emancipation Day. So first of all, um, let me thank uh, MP Majid Jahauri, who passed the unanimous motion on March the 24th, 2021, that made Emancipation Day effective, an item to commemorate across Canada, which builds on previous efforts that I had been involved in. And let me also thank Senator Wanda Thomas Bernard, who adopted, was facilitated the adoption of this motion in the Senate June the 28th, 2021. But it has a long history in this country. And let me just go back over some of that history. First of all, um, Emancipation Day isn't just a celebration. Emancipation Day is very much tied in to the experience of slavery of Africans and Pani or First Nations on these lands that we now call Canada. Slavery began in, on these lands by 1628 and was not officially and irrevocably ended until August 1st, 1834. So Canada, or this space, had a 200 year history of the enslavement of Africans. Um, by 1867, when Canada became a country, while we didn't have slavery at that moment in time, much of the infrastructure, much of the philosophical preset had already been established. So moving up a bit, moving past the resistance and the resilience of Africans in this country and globally, we had many people who spontaneously, sorry, let me just go back a little bit, People spontaneously celebrated the enactment, the, the actualization of uh, August 1st, 1834. They had events. They jumped, they were rejoicing. They were spiritually moved. They were socially moved. They were educationally doing things. They were gathering in order to share their joy um, and, and share their experience of having been enslaved but they were also doing so while being completely mindful of the reality in other places in the world, not controlled by the British, British Empire, and in other places in the Caribbean, for example, where slavery, the enslavement of Africans was so very high, that it continued. It continued in the United States. Hence, we had the Underground Railroad because people knew that if they got to Canada, they could be free. They could be free, but not always equal. So these celebrations continued and continued and continued. The biggest ones being in the Windsor area. There were celebrations in every place that there were black people living in this country. The biggest one, again, being in Windsor, especially by the 1950s, 1960s, under the auspices of Walter Perry. It was called, the, I think, the greatest freedom show in the world, and it was. They had people coming over from uh, Detroit 
They had the president of the United States' wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, coming over. Um, people from uh, Motown, Stevie Wonder, Diana Ross and the Supremes. Everybody came to Emancipation Day celebrations in Windsor. But there were also big celebrations held in St. Catharines in a place called Port Dalhousie. And they were pumped up by a strong contingent coming in from Toronto and coming in from the Caribbean, uh, sorry, from the West, from um, the United States. And this, this celebration was organized by B.J. Spencer Pitt. And I say that because when he got up and to talk about who he was, he had attitude. And um, he was a lawyer, but he was also the head of the Universal Negro Improvement Association or the Universal African Improvement Association in Toronto. So people would go down by bus, by steamship, to Port Dalhousie to have these opportunities to celebrate. And frankly, it was like a, an opportunity to meet people of the, uh, around the country, uh, particularly in the United States. So the, there were some relationships that formed as a result of these Emancipation Day celebrations too. Um, but then time passes, and by the 1960s, there were, many things had changed. The venues went into disrepair or no longer were functional. But most significantly, especially in the Windsor, Detroit area, the celebration was ended politically because of concerns about uh, social unrest, and they were ended by the police um, due to civil rights activities that was going on in the United States that people felt would spill over into Canada and cause problems. So all this to say that by um, 1995, after my successful efforts towards effecting February as Black History Month in this country, which I can, you know, um, I had been able to uh, have it secured with the city. It had already been started by the Canadian Negro Women's Association, already been celebrated through the Ontario Black History Society. But by the time I became the president, there was a, a problem with how it had been secured. And we didn't know that you had to go on a month, on an annual basis, not monthly, um, to have, seek out this approval from the city of Toronto. So we immediately sought to rectify that. I also then, with the, our contact from the province, had it officially commemorated through the province of Ontario. I got it commemorated across this country at every provin provincial level. And then I also had been working on uh, uh, federal uh, politicians in order to have it nationally recognized. All the while, holding events, speaking in schools and community organizations, and I probably personally offered as many as 2,000 presentations to schools and community organizations, trying to raise awareness about the black history and the importance of this to our community and to the broader community. By 1995, I was introduced to the concept of um, of August 1st as Emancipation Day and the need for it to be commemorated in a formal way. Uh, and this was through a contact that I made from the Caribbean Historical Society of Trinidad and Tobago. I began the process in 1995 of seeking official commemoration of this. By October 1996, this initiative had been successful in having proclamations issued by the City of Toronto, Metro Toronto, and the City of Ottawa. Um, I kept working on it. And by 1999, it had gone to, um, by 19, in the 1990s, I was able to affect um, interest through Preston Manning and the Reform Party and he had a reception in honor of August 1st as Emancipation Day, but there was no action taken to make it happen. By 1999, 
Deepak Obdry, uh, MP from Calgary West, used one of his private members' bills to um, try to get it through. It went to second reading twice in 1999, didn't get passed. In, in 2000, it went to second reading again through DPAC, didn't get passed. In the meantime, I've also been working with provincial MPPs and continuing to host and organize events with very little money, no money. Um, ultimately, it was accepted. It was put through on a unanimous bill, Bill 111, through um, the initiative of uh, MPPs Ted Arnott, Maria Van Bommel, and Peter Koromos. The first unanimous all-party supported bill in the province of Ontario. Uh, from that point on, some of the celebrations were actually held at Queen's Park and held in under the auspices of all three parties. Uh, it kept growing in uh, um, support, which was wonderful, but I still was having trouble getting it through nationally. With this new government in place, in 2015, I approached my local MP, Arif Rani. I approached Greg Fergus. I was in Ottawa frequently on other matters. I approached many people, all the while still having been holding these many um, commemorations, including uh, a commemoration in, with um, Lieutenant Governor David Onley, where we held it at Fort York National Historic Site. And at the height of some of those combined commemorations of Simcoe Day and Emancipation Day, we had as many as 2,000 people attending, as well as having international guests from other emancipation initiatives in the United States and the Caribbean. So by um, 2015, I had approached Arif, had approached Greg, had approached a number of other MPs, and also introduced the idea to Senator Wanda Thomas Bernard. By 2016, I was advised that I should issue a parliamentary petition in order to ensure that it got to um, the agenda for the House. I did so. That was su submitted February the 14th, 2016, I believe. Um, but a decision was made that it should go directly to the Senate. And it did, but by 2018, even though it had gone to two, two readings in the Senate, it did not pass. Mm. So, um, I kept up my interest. I, kept, uh, I had also been working with the opposing parties in the Senate to see if I could get um, some agreement, but even though I did get that agreement, the session ended. So that's what, where we were at with that particular process. Then it was decided that it should go back to the House. It ended up going to Majid Jahare. It went to a couple of very interesting readings, but ultimately it went to second reading, March 24, 2021. So the path to this first national celebration didn't happen overnight, didn't happen because someone thought, oh, isn't this a good idea? Let us do this. It happened because I was working on it. It happened because you were working on it in terms of your support um, of events and signing petitions it ha and, and hold, hosting your own events. It happened because the ancestors were here and were guiding our actions. It happened because there was something called slavery in this country. And that slavery needed to be acknowledged and we need to not remember the trauma, but address the trauma and the trauma, the ongoing impacts of the enslavement of people of African origin in this country and around the world can never be fully addressed unless we begin with the honoring and the understanding and the learning and the healing 
that comes from a recognition of August 1st as Emancipation Day.